Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Off Season 3. I'm here today to talk to you about putting. <laughs> wow, do I have a story for you on how I've selected my new putter. So you ever just walk into the golf shop and you walk over to the putting green, grab a random putter, and all of a sudden you start draining putts. Just draining them. So now you're faced with the decision of, okay, do I buy this putter or not? Now I'd like to say I've never succumbed to that pressure, but I have multiple times. And recently, I got hit hard by that. A couple weeks ago, I met a golf town and I went in with the premise of I wanted to try a similar style of putter to that that Cameron Smith uses. I think Patrick Reed uses a similar neck. Both great putters. And it was a style of putter I'd never tried. Originally, I was looking at the Mizuno version of that, but it's like $350. And you know, just for the sake of testing, I didn't want to have to spend that much money. So then I looked over at the Cleveland section of the putting area and had these putters on for clearance. And one of the putters they had available was this one right here, the Cleveland Huntington Beach 3. It had the neck, the weight was great, milled face. I think these putters initially came out in 2017. I went and looked online after. Uh, the grip is great, amazing putter, feels good. I start draining everything. It's like 120 something dollars plus tax. It's no brainer. So I bought it, brought it to the course, started testing it, right? Thought it was great, thought I'd found a putter, was was actually doing really well with it on the course. Then I went to another golf town. You know, just walking by, have some errands. You know what it is. You know, sometimes you see a golf shop, you gotta walk in. It's, I think, an obligation for us as golfers to have to walk into stores whenever we see one, right? So I walk in, walk over to the Cleveland section, try that putter, you know, just see, okay, cool, still, still draining. Then I pick up another version of the Cleveland putter, which is the Huntington Beach, Number four, it's with this neck. Now, I had zero expectation. All of a sudden, I am draining quite literally anything I look at. And I'm trying all the outrageous putts. I'm draining absolutely everything. Now I'm faced with the problem with I just bought a putter. Now do I have to buy another putter? Well, clearly, I bought both. <laughs> what we're gonna do in today's video is I brought these putters to Rich. We put them through the Quintic. And below, I have the PDFs from both of the Quintic sessions. So you can download them because so that you can follow along. I've got the Quintic session for this putter and for the other putter. So download them now before we roll it. Rich is gonna take you through the data. We also have an interesting surprise three quarters of the way through this video that totally unlocked a new thing in my putting that I'm so, so excited about. So make sure you watch the entire thing. Let's kick it over to me and Rich over at the shop at Genuine Golf. Here we go. All right, Master Rich, what is, uh, what's the verdict, what's the damage? It's impressive. Um, there's so much good going on that it's tough to highlight those little tweaks. So, you know, your face rotation is very, very good. Um, your face angle at impact is almost robotic. Like, we're getting blue numbers. So, for anyone not, not kind of au fait with Quintic, anything red, you know, we're looking at that and seeing, you know, with that, do we need to change it? Uh, anything in amber, we're working in the right direction. Anything green is very, very good. And anything blue is considered tall level. So with Gabe, we're getting a lot of greens. We're getting a lot of blues. Um, you know, for ball roll, forward rotation, we take out number six, because there you go. You know, he's, we're, we're blue. You know, his forward rotation on the ball is it's superb. Um, so we're not a dumpster fire, is what you're saying. No, we, we've, putter, come, we've come a long way. Whatever that putter is, <laughs> Um, the way it's set up, it's working very, very well. Um, you know, if we, the one thing we want to do is we, we don't want to focus on all the blues and the you know, greens and the ambers. What we really want to see is a, a decent range, right? So getting this range into a really reliable pattern really helps us when it comes to fitting a putter. If someone's all over the show and we're seeing a range that's red, we right. need to completely look at like why these things are happening. Right. Um, and so my red range is pre-acceleration, pre, pre right? Yeah. Well, you and that's some, you had some uh, putts that you really kind of hammered home. Right. Uh, you were hitting pretty hard, and we got there. But your range is actually you, know, you might see that your pre-acceleration there is we've got some red numbers and ambers and be discouraged, but we actually look at your range. It's one point nine. It's it's really really good. So okay. there's some positive, positives to take from that. So um, not bad for a $129 putter. putter. 
works. And if you put that putter in your hand for whatever reason, when you touch that putter, you, you liked it. You started putting well with it. So whatever that is, it works. Um, but the results speak for themselves. It's very, very reliable. So we should try and emulate that with another putter to see if it works just as well. Yeah, if it's the putter, if it's the setup, what is it? Yeah. And now uh, let's, let's look at this spicy putt, guys. Number nine <laughs> is the spicy putt of the day. Let's um, go. But that was the, even the last four putts you had yeah. were very, very good. You know, your face and impact, very, very good. Your path repeats extremely well. It's very unusual for us to see a, a path over 17 uh, putts that tight. Very, very good. Uh, I think it will pull the spin or, and see throughout the path. It's very, very good. I did see your line dr drift out every now and again. So, okay, and then would that be me at setup? Setup. I, I was watching your, you know, I wasn't just watching this screen kind of, you know, memorized by the numbers. I'm actually looking at what you're doing. And you, you do search for that line or an, an address every now and again. And the, and the toe tends to get a little up. Um, now, I'm not jumping at that and saying let's change it, but let's be aware of it. Like if you're conscious of it uh, and, and getting that where it needs to be, we won't see this jump in. Like there, there was one there, you were 1.92 degrees. Right. right. I want to see that. It's more of an anomaly. It's right. something that I'm going to focus on because, you know, really. But that would be more me versus the putter. A hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So, but the good thing is that what we're seeing is that the tool, this is a great matchup for me. Oh yeah. Which is great because we haven't found that. And anybody that's been watching the channel, putting has not been a fun experience of trying to find the right tool. So it's good to see that this actually might be the right, uh, the right wand. We're, we're, we're in the right direction. Um, your launch angle on that one shows that it's a little high, uh, but I actually think in general, your launch angle is actually quite good. Uh, let's have a little look. Yeah, we had one anomaly there, but we're pretty tight. You know, I, Here, I'll look at the launch angle. What is it, launch angle? Launch angle, yeah. So we, we bring it down here. Right. You know, you're averaging 1.9. That's a nice launch angle. Uh, the range is pretty decent. We have one anomaly in there. So let's get rid of it. And here we go. Right. We start to see that that's in the green. You're launching very well. So the loft on that putter is 2.5 degrees. I, I personally wouldn't change it. Okay. I think, I think that's in a really good spot. A part of me was looking at that line angle going, do we need to change it? Because I saw you hunting for it. But it was just a blip okay. that showed up. So it's worth us looking at it, being aware of it, but I'm not going to start bending apart it because of one anomaly that came into the, to the numbers there. Yeah, this, this is fantastic. So very exciting to see those kind of putting numbers. I have never seen my face angle path, any of that, that good, quite frankly. So was quite surprised. Now, to rule out a definite winner, I wanted to test the other putter. So the following week when I went back, I brought the other putter with me and decided to run it through its paces. So here is Rich taking a look at that data. And again, if you haven't yet, download the PDFs below so you could follow along. Boom. Great putt. Face angle. There isn't much going wrong, dude. It's, uh, so you need one more or are we good? No, we're good. If All we, right, Brother Rich. <laughs> if we look at your face angle numbers, very, very good. Uh, you're consistently uh, you know, getting close, even robotic there, how good that was. Twist is always good. Uh, that's coming down to the fact that you're hitting it out the middle all the time. Uh, one thing that we are going to kind of look at is your acceleration. So while we are seeing red numbers, and amber numbers, which says we need to work on it. We're seeing your range is superb. So whatever that tweak is that we're gonna find, it's gonna be pretty easy, I think. I don't think it's gonna be a struggle in us hunting for a long time to get that down. Um, you know, post acceleration is very good. Uh, launch angle, it's good. We had a, a funky one in there uh, yeah. where it jumped up. Like if we take that out, boom, right? So it's, it's totally okay to take out the anomaly every now and again, um, because you don't want to be factoring on one bad part when we've had 10 that are fantastic. Right. Um, the line angle on the first one and the last one, very similar, right? So just a little funky. 
just a little bit, just a tiny bit. But and sorry, too much toe up or? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so we, we can look at that and see if we need to change it. Um, your zero skid is awesome. Um, you know, you're constantly getting the ball roll straight out the gate. We're not skipping and skidding right. everywhere. Um, and we can actually see that funny part. Forward rotation, zero. Yeah, straight out of the gate, Zero. it's rolling forward. Oh, amazing. Uh, it's getting the ball going, so very, very good. Um, launch angle's very consistent. Push-pull. Uh, that's our top spin. A little bit of side spin, not a lot. And a bit of rifle. So, trending in the right direction. That rifle's being affected because it's an average, and we've got that weird one in there. Right. Um, but all in all, you're doing the right thing. The ball's going in the right direction. Um, I would just look at, you know, a tendency of this to get with the toe up a little bit. Right. Right. But we'll get there. We'll figure it out. We'll figure out what that acceleration is, and uh, we'll dive into it. Now that we have kind of data on both, yeah. Which putter is the better putter for me, just from a pure numbers just perspective? Yeah, just looking straight at the data points, um, I would say that the putter we, we last used is better. Okay. We're definitely having to kind of really focus on small elements because you pop well with both of them. But if we look at your face angle previously is 1.60. Um, right. Now we've got a face angle of a range of 1.34. Um, so that's a great number. Um, if we look at twist, you know, 0.09. Okay. Right. And previously it was 0.0. It was, yeah, 0.10. So we're really being finicky. Okay. Um, but then if we look at your um, face rotation, is way better on this putter. Like, really, really good. We're in the green with both numbers, range and average. Right. Before you were 42, um, with a range of 23. Now we're 36 with a range of 15. So definitely that style of putter with that neck and the way that face is balancing is letting you l rotate the face less, right? You're not opening and closing a lot. So with a the point of impact, it's square and more often, which is what we're really trying to encourage when you putt. Isn't that kind of funny though, because considering that is a very toe flow heavy putter. Yeah, exactly. So for, I guess from my hands. Yeah, yeah for your, your hands, the way you feel the putt, you're able to stabilize it for longer. Interesting. Um, and there's kind of a, you would say that a toe flow putter is making the, you know, correcting, well, making the putt, people think that it makes the putt, you know, the toe open and close more. When it's toe heavy, it's actually making the, the face not close as fast. That toe is counteracting that toe movement. So when you give someone a putt and they're putting with a lot of arc, you can give them a toe heavy putter and it slows it down. Right. Uh, it's kind of counterintuitive. Right. But, um, and so we're seeing tighter tolerance for me. And, it, exactly. And under the gun, if I'm going to try and get quick, it's probably good to have something that slows me down a bit. Exactly, and you can see from the results, there's no really arguing with it, right. that's what's happening. But that's the, you know, there are exceptions to that rule where you will give someone a toe heavy putter and the way they, they hold it, they just start going nuts with it. So while that is a trend, I wouldn't fit everybody that way. You've got to right. see what, the, what that putter does with that person. Right, well, yeah. and this is the beauty of us battle testing both. <laughs> exactly. Um, are there any other categories that are standouts for this one in particular? Uh, I think... Interesting that you're saying the lie angle I make this, so that's a hands thing, so I gotta be wary of keeping the hands. Every now and again, um, we saw it with the other putter too. Uh, out of 10 parts, we saw two that you just had a tendency to get that toe up in the air. So if we took those two parts out, for instance, we would see your lying as a great range right. uh, and a great average, but we, I wouldn't change the putter because of these two numbers, right? right? Um, I wanna look at, making you more aware of it. Right. Uh, instead of just being, oh, let's just change the putter and off of two. So I, gotta, I just gotta practice and be militant on that. A little bit. Yeah. Aware, conscious. Conscious, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but great putting overall, the stats coming out of this, if we look at the ball and how it's rolling off the face, it's, it's fantastic. Right, so pretty cool being able to go on the Quintic. The data and everything, it's quite the experience to see your putting stroke broken down to that level. And what you can learn is, is amazing. And I thought when we had finished testing that second putter that we had a definite winner, 100%. But there was one piece of data that piqued Rich's curiosity, and that was my acceleration. So he wanted to run a test to see if we could work on a couple of things with my stroke 
in order to get that number better. And what came out of that test was super, super cool and has, I think, changed my putting entirely. So here's the footage from that test. All right, we're gonna do a little experiment now. Uh, after testing the putters, we found the putter we like, yeah. but we want to do a little acceleration experiment because yeah. you, you want to see how we can dial that in. Yeah, there's a range. You know, you're, you're hitting some great putts, um, but then your acceleration is jumping up and down a bit. You know, so I just want to see if there's a way for us to make you conscious of how you're achieving that. Right. Instead of us, every now and again, willy-nilly, we find it, and we go, oh, that was a good one. I want you to be able to go away with something you go, ah, oh, I know how to keep that consistent when I'm on the golf course. So hopefully we can just do a little experiment here and see if we can dial that in. All right, true experiment here. So you got a piece of tape <laughs> on the ground. High, high technology. The high technology. We got a $7,000 putting thing, <laughs> but we got tape. We definitely got tape. Okay, so what's, what am I, what, what so are we trying to- make the tape a little longer. Okay. I wanna just experiment with you accept pre and post acceleration numbers. So we're gonna do our first part. Okay. Okay, and I just want you to do a normal part. We're gonna need a. I was good. And it went in. We're gonna need a bigger bolt. Hold on a second. All right. Pretty good acceleration. That was better. That, that was 2.2. 2. 2. So 2. We're, in the, we're in the amber. Right. Okay. Um, and sorry, where is the acceleration being measured? Yeah, so it's going to be pre and post impact. All right. So we're looking at your acceleration through and where you're de decelerating okay. at impact. So you know, to be in the green, we need to be between 0.5 and 1.5. So this just means my overall tempo is too quick. Well, how do we create tempo? We create tempo through a putting stroke, right? Right. Um, so if, if we do a, another part right now, give me a second. I'm not gonna save that last one. Yep, give me a part. I tried to go slow on that one. I know you did. We, can, we, can, we can scrap that one, bring that ball back. Ha ha. <laughs> 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 Look at good. that. It was good. All right, let's see, look at this. Yeah, but you cheated. <laughs> right. I, I cheated the test. <laughs> you cheated on it. I cheated, okay, yeah. never mind, no. never mind. We're gonna, we, we will try and do that. We'll try and repeat that, okay, at a true putt length. Right, because that, that was way short. You duffed, so, you duffed it. It was, a, it was a, not, a, not a good putt to measure. <laughs> I tried to check. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> Doing the black book. Uh, okay. But look how long your path is. Right. Right? The impact is here. All right. And then we've got yay and yay. It's actually pretty similar. Yes, yeah, so, right? so it's about a foot behind. And about 10 inches through. Right. All right. Um, let's just do another one. Crushed it. You got some compression on that one. Yeah. Pretty good though. But plus 2.5 yeah. acceleration. So we're getting so, there. So, so that's it's, where. It's better than it was, right? Now you're kind of conscious of it. So now you want me to go further back? No, no, no. Okay. I'm just letting you do what you're doing right now. Okay. I actually want to do somewhere we test and go back, yay and yay. Okay, so we're going to try and now go eight inches back. I just want to see if that five inches through. make you conscious of keeping it consistent through the ball. I went more forward, but I went in. Ooh. 3.8. Yeah, exactly. So but it went in the hole. Look how good the face angle and closing angle numbers yeah, are. Yeah, right. Like that's a yeah. that's a really good. That's why it's worth exploring what gets right. you to achieve what. Right. right. And actually having physical things in place for you to, to look at and measure. And again, we're exploring, we're, we're trying to find out what you do that works. Right. Not trying to change anything right now. No, no, just seeing. That's very interesting though. You know, if you saw someone putt that far back on a, you know, a 12, a 13 foot putt, I'd be like, well, you've got to spend a lot of your time either trying to control the putter face right. and the head, right? Deacceleration sometimes to keep it consistent, right? Okay, so let's see. 
little punchy bulletproof. I try to keep that as short as possible. 4.2. Right. Cool. So we're starting to see that that is definitely making you kind of get through it, right? So let's get another bow in here. So 4.2 acceleration on that one. This so one, what do you want to see on this I one? I want to go longer. OK. I want to go long and long. All right, we're going to call this one on one. All right. Just give me a second. It saw the ball move there. There you go. You hit it bang on the money there. Yeah. And that went in. Three. Three. And look at the other numbers too. Lie angle is very, very good. Angle of attack, face angle, face rotation, superb. I think there's a chance for if we dial it in a bit and tighten it up, we'll start to see some really consistent numbers. And by you having this kind of conscious right. I would plan, say that, we can dial it into so that you, even your lie angle is getting more consistent. That one felt like that distance yeah. um, felt like I had control over it. And so this distance, which one are we yep. doing? Yeah, I want to see that one. Yeah, okay. The 1x. So that's about just under a foot. Yep. That's in again. 2.9. 2.9. Yeah. Uh, lie angle is again bang on. We're not, I think just by making you conscious of that, right. you've started to really kind of get the putting lie angle perfect. So all just the time. so you guys can see where we started was there. <laughs> you were here and here. To there. It's a big, big um, arc. Impact is here. Rich has got me going. The last two that you guys have seen is from here to here. Yeah, starting to dial it in a little bit. Some of the best putters I know and have seen, they very much have like a, a punchy follow through. Bang on the that was again. That was a great putt. <laughs> that, that rolled well. Yeah. All right. 2.6. See, see how much more consistent your acceleration has been since we kind of dialed mm -hmm. it in. Um, we're going to do just again, we're going to experiment. I like this. We're going to try and do this one. OK, we're going to shorten it. Just so I just want to see what it achieves for you. So basically a five inch yeah. follow through. Let's just see what that does. See if it starts to Kay. creep that up. One X again. Yeah, great move. All right. Oh, <laughs> wait a second. We found something on that, though. Yeah, that was very, very good. Okay, so Pretty it didn't make it to the hole, but there's something there that was a we, we want to look that was at. a perfect acceleration. Yeah. Huh. So it's constant. All right. Let's just do that again. Yeah, that was great. Again, wow. Very, very good number. Minus 0.4. <laughs> right. Okay, so that's so some. It, it's not. It might not be the right answer, right? but it's finding something, right? So where Rich has me dialed in on stroke length now is we're going from there to there. Right, we're trying to just test and see what that does for his uh, consistency. We're getting good numbers. We've got to get the results now. We're here right now, right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to put one here. I just okay. want to see what you do. So basically three inches after the ball. I'm just. Yeah getting you to do something to see if you can, I don't want you leaving short, so I want to push you through the extreme. That's bang on. I oh, have a friend that puts oh. exactly like that. Well, he's it's kind of like the, 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 the Brant Snedeker. Wow. Right. Okay. Interesting. So it's the, it's the Brant Snedeker pop stroke, kind yeah. of. A little bit. Interesting, face angle wasn't good, but it still went in. Yeah, we're really, like, we, when I'm testing like this, I don't try to focus so much on every single part. Right. I'm just seeing if we can find something that gets you concentrating on what's actually happening. Because right. as soon as we put this down, your lie angle has been very good. Right, interesting. When we're focusing on this, obviously, 
We're getting really good pre-impact acceleration now. Right. You're not kind of quitting on it. Um, but our other numbers are starting to fluctuate. Right. That's because our focus has been drawn to this other aspect. So I wouldn't start trying to change all your putting things. I'd just do a few more of these, right? And then we'll see if we so, can get that going to your so, standards. So, because it's really what's, what's gone to, to crap is my face angle, right? Yeah. What affects the face angle? Yeah, what's causing? Well, it's more toe right? So we could be seeing that there's not enough time now for you to even get that toe to take effect. Okay, so. <laughs> Go get it. I have the other. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so then one thing I will try. With this putter I found, I was doing like the Brooks Kepka grip. So I'm gonna see. We're throwing in another variable. We're gonna throw one extra variable in here. Because that's what we tested it with last time. All right. Bang on the money when it came to your points there. That was good. And there's my face angle at blue. Acceleration no. Get in the hole. I don't mind it. Okay. It's very, like, to be in the green, you're point one off. All right? Before we were up here. Yeah. Now we're just dropping down a bit with this putter. Right. All right, we're dropping down a little bit. But very, very close to being in the green. I wouldn't focus on that too much. Angle of attack, you know, 0, 0.0. You know, we want to get it a little bit more. Low points bang on. So we're going to do a, we'll look at that. Okay, path there, everything. Okay, that's good, actually. Paths, like, all these numbers are very, very good. But because you're putting so, so good, we can start to really focus on the nitty gritty. Right. Um, gave that a little bit of loft. Line goes fantastic. Face angle was bang on. Give me a fraction D loft on this one, all right? Okay. That was great. <laughs> well, let's think about what's actually going to happen under pressure. Right. All right. Oh. It's tiny, tiny. Look at that face angle. Look at that twist. Point six. We're very, very, very close to having everything in the green there. Right. Very, very close. Yeah, very good. Yeah, if we think to. You know, what are you going to do under pressure? Right. Um, you're probably going to revert back to what you were naturally doing. But you know what? A shorter stroke might be... It's easier to control. It's easier to control. So maybe it's like, it's just, maybe it's just, I'm literally stealing this tape. <laughs> <laughs> this is, the tape is coming we're, with me. We're going to measure it. Before and going we go. on the green. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll measure it before we go. And, That's in. We're getting the most in with this putter. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, 1.8 acceleration, but face angle 0.5 and 0 0.03 yeah. closing. But before we were seeing 3.5s. Right. Right? Right. We've taken that range from this to Yeah. Very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, low point and angle of attack on that last one was fantastic. Yeah, we haven't seen a red acceleration in, in a while. In a little while, yeah. Love that part. Mm -hmm. Right on the money. Yeah, these are going in every time. Well, 0.7. The path, not great, but everything else is fine. Right? Yeah. And it went in. But you've got to think 2.6 isn't this huge. Like, I'm not getting mad about it. Right. I can't get it within 2.6, so I'm looking at that thinking it's fine. <laughs> oh, dear. Any other things you'd want you want to potentially tinker with? Right, we're going to tinker with your ball position. Okay. Bring it back a touch, but like I'm looking at it. <laughs> this is how fine up we're looking at. I, I want you to bring it back a qu quarter of an inch. Okay. All right, but not we really are, and you could definitely easily be moving the ball quarter of an inch, right? Mm -hmm. Good to go. That's probably your shortest oh. follow through yet. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> right? Ha <laughs> ha. There very, we very go. Good. Very, very good. 
that's some that's some spice right there. All right, so we're gonna mark exactly now what on, the magic numbers were on Rich's magical putting mat. So this is our impact position. If we could get you going here, All right? You actually on that last one, you were right here. Oh, interesting. Um, and that was fantastic. Uh, and on the backstroke, you were. We were always one xing. All right. So when you're pu practicing putting, we really want to be keeping these in mind because this is where we were really dialed. Yeah, really good. I get, should I get rid of this now? It's official. We can. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. But really good. So isn't that absolutely wild? Going between the putters with my old stroke, clearly the three was the better putter, but my stroke itself was flawed. Now, making the adjustments to my stroke and creating a better stroke out of it, all of a sudden the Huntington four was perfect because it didn't have as much toe flow, I was able to close the face. My, I then had the perfect numbers across the board. What's been really cool about this is that I've taken this stroke now to the course and I'm seeing it pay off in the real world, which is obviously the entire point of all this. This testing is all great. These experiments are all great, but we've got to translate it into real golf. What's been really cool thus far is seeing the effect of, that this stroke has on my putts. Now greens right now, unfortunately are a bit shaggy. I'm not getting true roll, but early indications are extremely positive. So I look forward to continuing to test this and continuing to practice this. I have my mat here that Rich gave me marked up. So I am getting hundreds of putts in a day here at home to dial in this stroke. I'm so excited to see how my putting progresses. I've never felt like I had the right setup and everything. And I knew there was some things inherently wrong with how I putted. So it's just nice to finally have data and everything pointing in the right direction. And who would have thought $120 putter would be the answer to my prayers. So hopefully you guys can see, it's not always about price. You never know what you're gonna find. And sometimes when you walk into a golf shop and you're draining everything, it might be the actual sign that you have found the one. So anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Join me on my off season journey, on my quest to become a pro golfer, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.